the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. My brothers and sisters, we begin these great three days, the Tridium, the three days in which the world was changed because of our Saviour's love for us. These three days in which the world continues to be changed because his love is still surrounding us. And these three days, which will see the world change forever, and one day his love will come and gather us to himself. As preparation to prepare ourselves to follow Christ to Calvary and to follow to the tomb on Sunday. Let us then firstly offer to him those things that we carry in our lives this week, those times when our thoughts, words and actions have weighed us down and we have fallen into sin. Lord, you were born from the Virgin Mary for the salvation of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, who died on the cross to heal the wounds of sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you rose from the dead to open for us the gates of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of chari charity and of life. We ask this, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year-old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, 
your sandal on your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall strike, shall destroy you, when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. And it be to God. The response to the psalm. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing, blessing cup, cup is, is a communion, communion with, with the, blood the blood of Christ. Christ. When shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Our, Our blessing, blessing cup is a communion with the blood, blood of Christ. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. Our, Our blessing, blessing cup is a communion with the blood, with the blood of, of Christ. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup ah, is a communion, communion with, the, with blood the blood of Christ. Christ. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Beloved, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also, after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ. King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise, Praise to you, you o, o Christ, Christ King, King of eternal glory. glory. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. And he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, 
but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you be seated, please? It's very strange tonight. I keep thinking I haven't put something out, that I've missed something, um, that I haven't actually topped up the oil in the candles, that I haven't actually... I didn't put the chalice. I forgot to put the chalice and the, and the suborium out until about ten minutes to, to seven. I was looking around. and I feel all the sixes and sevens tonight. It's not normal. Not normal. I know normally at Holy Week, we all fall apart in the Holy Week because it's not the routine of a Sunday. The musicians are the worst on the block when it comes to Holy Week and they go into absolute meltdown, even though it's all the same stuff, really. But also I feel in a bit of a strange way today, I have to say, because some of the bits you can't do, they're not in the usual place. It's a bit like having a Christmas dinner but not having turkey or not having something which you're used to, not having crackers one year, and you sit down and go, it's missing. Not having the bowl with the towels and the warm water ready. It's odd, very odd. It's as odder for me than it is for you. <laughs> it's very strange. And not being able to possess around and those things which we normally do. I wonder if it's, you know, last year there was no one here for me to work with at all. Last year I wasn't even allowed in here. I did Holy Week in the space of about 12 foot by 18 foot. I managed it somehow. But I certainly do wonder of that night of the Passover feast. That day when, as we heard the other day and during the week, Jesus said, go to so-and-so in the city to the disciples and ask them for the room and get it ready, go and get it ready and we'll come for the Passover feast. The disciples, the apostles, or the group of people around them, there were certainly more than 12 in that room that night, they would have known what to do. Yeah, it's the Passover. Yeah, we'll get in the lamb, we'll get the bitter herbs in, We'll splash out on wine. We don't normally have wine. We'll make sure that we've, we've cooked the bread properly, the unleavened bread. We'll get all that ready. We do it every year. We know who sits around the table at the right places. Put Jesus at the head of the table because he's the master and teacher and we all fit around him all on one side because that's how Leonardo wants to paint us. We know how to do the Passover. We've been doing it since I'm born. Get the crackers in. And that night, they were in their normal ritual world. They were doing a good Passover meal. Just as it was, we heard in the first reading there from Exodus, the instructions from the first Passover. They would have known why it was happening. They would have known that as they ate that meal, that the lamb that they ate was more than just a nice leg of lamb from Morrison's. By the way, have you noticed they put the price up? 
Oh, dear cheap bellies. It wasn't just a bit of meat that you got. That lamb was something which was quite difficult to get. It was quite special. You had to book it probably from the year before. Because the lamb represented something more than just a nice meal. In our sanitised world, we don't like to think how we get our meat. But that lamb reminds you so much of going to the temple, which is a copy of it. The lamb was the animal which was sacrificed, the blood poured out, and was the symbol of the salvation and the saving of the people of God from, the, from their overlords in Egypt so many centuries before. The Passover supper now is a very forward ritualistic thing. But it's so similar. If you go to a Passover supper now, you will sit there, or if you go to any time when they share the bread and the wine in the synagogue, you'll go, oh, I know some of that. So they would have sat there going, yeah, I've got this, I've got this. But Jesus, the one at the head of the table, the one who was in charge, had something different going on. Something was different within him. And this moment, when he gets up, puts the towel around him, he gets the bowl of the water, just so I try and copy him here and here out, very badly, and goes to them to wash their feet, the ritual washing of feet. That was wrong. That's not how you do it. There's a bowl by the door and you wash your own feet as you walk in. You don't have the master, you don't have the one in charge washing your feet. The confusion, the strange sense of confusion which must have set in that night, we can only wonder at. But then Jesus takes the bread and the wine, just as in the Passover meal, the celebration of the Passover which happens, but then he said, this is my body. This is my blood. As Paul tells us in the second reading, written ten years maybe later. Eh? They must have gone. That's not in Exodus. Where is that? Even George wouldn't find it. That's a, what, 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 what's he on about? That's really messing it up. Spurs would have to cancel the cheese and crackers now. The whole thing's falling apart. And then they left. Somehow they got through the meal. Somehow they got to the end of the meal. Somehow they just went, oh well. And they left. And went home. And they went home towards Bethany where Mark and Mary and Lazarus lived. We know they had a good night, it tells us in Luke's Gospel, they were singing on the way home. And we only know why you sing on the way home. Until they stop in Gethsemane, full of people, full of people everywhere, loads of pilgrims packed into Jerusalem, all having a great night. It's like New Year's Eve on steroids, they're all snoozing away and dancing and singing and playing instruments around campfires outside the city. Everybody camping, some staying with friends like Jesus, they stop on the way home. And still, the apostles must have wondered, what was he on about earlier on? Why did he mess with the night? Why was that Passover not the proper one that we're used to? The events that unfolded then, through them, what happens tomorrow would have thrown them into a place of despair and confusion. What was that night about? And why, they would have asked tomorrow, 
Are we at this moment of desolation? Tonight begins a change, but also it begins a growth. It's a growth on the Passover of the people of God. It is a growth on the, on the prophets and those of old. It is starting to fulfil what has been alluded to. But it has to take a journey of despair to get there. It has to take us into a place of emptiness and confusion tomorrow when we leave here. I say you have to hit rock bottom to build back up. The building up will happen early in the early hours and just as the sun is thinking of coming back over the horizon on Sunday morning. We must wait for that moment. We must offer ourselves and whatever is confusing for us now, whatever is strange and weird and odd in our lives, in our world, in our circumstances, throughout the communities in which we live and within our hearts, offer all that to our Saviour. Because he is the one who does know what is happening tonight. He is the one who did know what was going to happen at that Passover in Jerusalem before he was arrested. And he is the one that did know what was going to happen on that morning of Easter Sunday. And he is the one that does know that he is coming back and will save you. And throw your confusion to the winds and fill you with certainty of his love and the kingdom to come. Hang in there. Offer yourself tonight to him afresh. Stand before the cross tomorrow and just let it all pour out into his hands. And get ready. Get ready for the sunshine on Sunday. So this night we pray for the church in every place in our world, for Christians gathered to follow the journey of our Saviour, that these days, these hours, may be offered to him in holiness, that we may trust in him afresh. We pray for our brothers and sisters who do not have the freedom to follow these days as we do, for their safety and well-being. We pray for those who persecute us as the Christian people, that they may see in us a constant seeing Christ, and look on Christ with curiosity and fresh hearts. We pray for all those in our world at this moment struggling with, amongst the pandemic which has overcome the human race, for all who's, who this night is a night of despair and pain. We pray for their well-being. We pray for healing where it may come. And we pray for all who tend and care for those in need. We offer to God our families, our friends, those who speak to us and ask for our prayers, those who share their worries and concerns with us, and those who seek our guidance and help. That we may respond by offering them Christ. That 
we may guide them to our Saviour. We pray for all those who have passed from this world. And as we recall the cross which awaits us tomorrow, we pray that through their death they may come to find Christ Jesus afresh in the glory offered to the thief and all those who call on him in repentance. We offer ourselves that following in the footsteps of our Saviour, one day we may come to that true place of love, of joy, of perfection beyond our imagination. And so, we gather around the table and place our own needs at the feet of our Saviour. We seek his guidance, we seek his comfort, we seek his mercy in our lives. As we offer our own needs to him now, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us as we offer our lives to you in prayer. Read our hearts well and answer these prayers and the prayers of all your people in ways we know and in ways we cannot understand. We call upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and also with you.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels, archangels, with thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servants, Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, and all who hold him to the truth, hand on the faith from the apostles. Remember, Lord, your servants, for whom we pray day by day, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For then we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary of the Cross, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this sublation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, 
Offer to your glorious majesty for the gifts you have given us. This pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you're pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Permit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these things good, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we have the confidence to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the suffer of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen.